with that sky. It's a very pleasant breeze this morning. With September, the weather starts changing, obviously. With all that cloud, we're going to take a little stroll around here. I wonder if there were slaves working here in Magdala. We know that many Magla people were sold into slavery after the defeat by the Romans of their rebellion against Roman power, Roman occupation, Roman oppression. And there's a slave today in the readings. It's one of the points that anchors my attention most. And slaves, slavery took a long time to be transformed in the Roman Empire. Isn't this amazing? So early in the morning for work here. Well, right now it's a quarter to seven, so it's not too early. There are lots of other things that take a long time to to abolish and we know the history of slavery can reach to modern times it's so hard for human beings to detach from habits and abuses and bad behavior it takes a long time but the reading today about onesimus and philemon his his owner, who had become Christian. It's a very interesting story. How Philemon obviously had a major grievance because he paid for him and now he's missing. He's at a loss. He's missing that work hand. There's a gap in his productivity or his well-being. Onesimus broke the social order. The amazing thing is that Onesimus then went to Paul. So Philemon is in, pro in trouble and Onesimus is in trouble and now Paul has a problem. <laughs> but Onesimus is evangelized and becomes a disciple. Maybe he already had had the desire. Probably Paul knew Philemon. That's why he's writing to him in such warm terms and with great confidence. So Philemon was probably a disciple already. And Paul is another happy pilgrim here. Paul is now working with Onesimus, and he says a word there that's also very interesting. That's another side comment here. He says he has become a father to Onesimus. It's a beautiful image. But that raises a side question about, again, understanding the gospel message and the gospel words. Because Jesus had said, don't call anybody father. And it's kind of hard to dispute that Paul is a great disciple. And a great apostle and incredibly faithful and suffered so much persecution and violence for the sake of the gospel
And then today in the gospel we have these very strong words about father unless you hate your father and your mother you cannot be my disciple so Jesus also uses the word father and he's understanding by the way he's saying it that everybody understands what a father is and that everybody has a father and that they're called their father father so this raises the question of how to interpret scripture And one of the big criteria is how it always was understood in the church. First of all, probably in the context of Scripture itself. So we cannot isolate verses from Scripture from the whole context. And to be able to read it in context. We'd have a lot more to say about that, maybe um, to win more deeply into the principles of understanding Scripture. Sometimes people want to isolate Scripture and just take it by itself and out of context, and then thereby losing the sense of the meaning, the meaning that was intended. And that's why there are so many people dedicated to Scripture study. One day we should go into a document called Dei Verbum and the Word of God. It's a marvelous document gathering how the church has dealt with Scripture through the ages and understood Scripture and revered Scripture and been guided by Scripture. So, Onesimus now is a brother to Paul, a son to Paul, a brother in the faith and he writes to Philemon and says you lost a slave but now you have him back as a brother and then he wants Onesimus to serve Philemon not as a slave serves a master but as a brother like Jesus servant washing feet to serve with love and to serve his brother well because if he had a duty to serve in Roman society as a slave to serve well because that was his position in life now he had a new vision of his identity that he is now a brother and he's serving his brother and in that sense that was the end of slavery already through the transforming message of the gospel. Of course, the abuses of slavery continued and the abolition of slavery took so long, sadly. And part of that comes because of another theme we have in the gospel today. And that is what it costs to be a disciple. And Jesus uses two armies of a king going into battle But also of somebody building a building and he said before you build a building I'm showing you our backyard here people and we normally never do that in the sunrise stroll and chat but there's a reason I'm doing that today before you build a building make sure you have what it takes to build it Otherwise, you start building and you don't finish. And everybody laughs at you and says, mocks you and says, this guy had no clue what they were doing. They started a building and didn't have the means to finish it. Miscalculated, imprudent. So two comments on that. First of all, on our building, this is actually, interestingly, the very first structure we built. It's going to be the restaurant. It's going to have another floor, God willing. But then a strategic decision was made because of many different challenges and dynamics going on back in 2012. And 
it's at least that long here, 2013, that we would just focus on getting Duke and Altum ready because it wouldn't be immediate service for the visitors and the pilgrims for prayer. And in order to open the restaurants, you need a lot more staff and infrastructure and permissions. And so this part of the project was in that sense, an easier step forward to finish. So even though this building was built first, we delayed this one. Also, obviously, because of lack of financial resources at that moment. And meanwhile, we even built the guest house and finished it. And inaugurated at the end of 2019. And then the COVID problem hit. We actually had a delayed opening date for 12, 12, 12, the 12th of, of December, 2012. <laughs> and we opened this in the, uh, May of 2014, Duke and Alton. And we still haven't finished this one, the first one we built. Well, that's just the history of this. And we are very confident that the Lord will provide all the donors to finish this building. And hopefully that will be soon, sooner than later. Hopefully it won't be delayed as much as our, delay, our other delays have been because of all kinds of issues. And now I want to go to the second point of this, the point why Jesus brings it up. The cost of discipleship. What discipleship takes. Discipleship is very radical. To follow Jesus, it's a huge gift that Jesus brings us, the complete renewal of our lives. But that takes a lot. And it's not just putting on a cover of plastic on a building to make it look like it's real. This was so good that when a news reporter came in here, <laughs> I still laugh over it. He said, oh, you finished the restaurant. Let me go in and see, can we have a meal? And his wife was with him and burst out laughing because she had realized that it was just covered with the plastic cover. It was so funny. But Jesus says we need to take discipleship very seriously to, to be a disciple of Jesus, not just joining a golf club or a stamp collecting club. Following Jesus is a whole total renovation of our lives. It's a whole changing of criteria. It's the end of the slaveries, of the addictions, of all our attachments that lead us astray. Following Jesus means that we need to uh, be completely renewed and that we're ready just like to love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your strength that means every other attachment has to be in second place and we have to become free we have to detach ourselves from all our possessions what is your greatest possession how difficult it would be for you to give that up for Jesus it's easy to say it in a prayer of one moment of devotion another thing is to make it really happen so as we call ourselves disciples of Jesus and want to be his disciples, let us ask for that great grace to be able to be completely free of every relationship if that's needed at any time. That the only relationship that counts is God's will, the source of our lives. Here come the volunteers. So this is a nice conclusion to our stroll this morning. They're coming in for their service here. Here's Ashley and Luis Gerardo. Ashley is from Bolivia. Say hello, Ashley. This is the live stream in the morning. And uh, Antonio is from Mexico, from Pueblo. Luis Gerardo is from Mexico. Moira is from uh, Ecuador. Lauren is from, uh, no, Ecuador. Moira is from Mexico. And Eva Luz is from Mexico. So, they're going to have their Sunday morning Mass now before they start uh, to serve so that their day starts with God. And that's really the whole point. We can accomplish a lot with God. Without God, we cannot. God is our strength. God is the resource, the ultimate source of all of our good. Every good gift comes from the Lord above. And it's not our efforts build buildings. 
And does the Lord build the house in vain? Does the laborer build? God wants our total trust because that's what makes our heart fulfilled. He wants our total happiness and we find that in him alone. All the other creatures are creatures, they're just that. They're there to strengthen us, to help us, to console us. Little gifts from God along the way as we grow. People, may these thoughts and reflections help you a little bit today as you ponder the scriptures and have a blessed Sunday, blessed week. See you later, alligators.